I mean, you think about it. Where did all chickens come from? And some of the chickens we have look a lot like these chickens. The original chickens came from the jungles of Indonesia. So this is a jungle creature. This is not should be like this should not be like on the farms of Denmark and Switzerland. It shouldn't be in like northern Alberta, and it shouldn't be even here on wet, cold, freaking winters of Arrington, fog and wet. It's really not even appropriate, even though it's been bred and bred and bred. It really wants to be in a more kind of jungle setting when it runs around completely loose. Eats a little bit, drops its droppings, eats a little bit, drops and dropping, and then after a week, after a month, comes back and it feeds on the bugs that have come back there. They're not made to be cooped up. They're not made to eat this dry uh, pellets that we feed them or grains. That are imported. And as much as people <laughs> like to get eggs that are veggie fed, <laughs> chickens are not vegetarians. So chickens, because of the way they are, they need to be warm, they need to be dry, and they need a lot of protection from predators because they're they've been just over domesticated. There's not a jungle fowl anymore that runs around wild, right? Ducks, on the other hand, well, ducks, they're almost a wild creature. You know, you, you take a chicken chick out of an egg and it needs protection for weeks underneath its mommy's wings. You hatch a duckling underneath a mommy duck and that duckling can go right from the egg right into the water. The cute little chicks in the, in the little glass, you know, aquarium and you hatch chicks yourself, whether with a mama or with an incubator. And then you do ducklings. Yep. It's like being a dog person and discovering cats or being a cat person and like discovering dogs. You know, ducks just, re they retain that specialness, you know, and, and they... even if they're dorky, they're just, they're still in the That's part of the, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and if you're not a vegetarian, you can also eat them. And once you've had duck, Eggs? Well, duck okay. eggs. We don't oh. eat chicken eggs anymore. So much richer, all the nutrients. And if you do a simple search, you'll find that duck eggs have ruffle, roughly double the, uh, the nutrients of chicken eggs. So yeah, we don't eat chicken eggs anymore. One of the huge advantages of ducks is they w are willing to eat a lot more food that's around them. So they will eat up to 100% wild food, whether that's your lawn or slugs. Well, chickens will eat up to a maximum of 28% green. So though we like to say, oh, my chickens, you know, scratch around and they find bugs, it's largely feel good. If you look at how much feed you go through for even just one chicken, let alone 100 chickens, uh, chickens require a lot of inputs, unless you have a lot of ranging area. And even this area here, you put 100 chickens in this area, and within a month, there would be not a living thing. There wouldn't be a blade of grass. There they wouldn't destroy. be a bug. Yeah. Even the grape leaves, everything you see, every flower it would be complete moonscape, right? And then we would have to buy food or some move them somewhere else, right? So uh, while ducks, on the other hand, and we have the huge blessing of this pond, the ducks spend all day in the pond and they eat so much that when we offer them duck food to make sure that, you I've know... I've been fermenting their dinner for them because um, it's supposed to be really healthy for them. I give it to them and we're noticing that the next morning there's still food there, so... Yeah. They used to just devour it all within, you know, it seemed like minutes. So this time of year, they're not even eating their special duck food that's specially <laughs> on the package says duck food, right? <laughs> even though it's moist and fermented, they're still like, you know, I think we'd rather eat algae and tadpoles. And for people who don't have a pond, there are ducks for them too. There's Muscovy ducks that are called perching ducks and they don't even need a pond. So they prefer actually to stay up in this area here. Um, and they just want things to perch on. They want to be dry. Just give them like a bin about this big with water in it and they're happy. Yep, no pond needed. Predators. predators. Well, yeah. go ahead. Well, yeah, you do have to watch for predators, <laughs> um, especially waterborne predators. Uh, we had issues with an otter and we had issues with a mink. But the mink is still out there. We saw a mink, even though um, I don't know if it got any. Like, I counted everybody. They all seem to be there. Uh, a mink can get through a hole that big. They can go, they can run, virtually run through stucco wire, which is an inch and a half square. Eagles, yeah. hawks, owls, ravens. There's the airborne predators, as you call it, refer to them. Eagle, yeah, and yeah. then water, water land, mink, otter, raccoons and then this will uh, this fall we'll be dealing with bears and cougars because when fall comes the animals think a lot more survival mode finding food fattening up and so their behavior changes and the bears and the cougars will come closer to this area 
So, and I, I think about that and, and um, what people don't realize when you're doing free range and truly free range, not like cage free or they're, they have, they're in a barn where they can leave the protection of the barn Which is called free run. and the lights and they can stick their hole, their, their head out of a hole the size of what a dog would go through and they look out and go, oh my God, the sky is falling and run right back in. Big difference between that and true free range. This is true free range where the chickens are completely loose and you're trying to give them protection by uh, being nearby, you know, being around the house, by trees, uh, and then getting them, letting them out after it's daylight and putting away before dusk. Predators are part of the, some of the costs that we incur that people at the farmer's market don't necessarily ever see or hear about, right? You don't want to come to the farmer's market and say, oh yeah, last night uh, uh, the mink killed 20 chickens and put them all in a row and, and bit all their heads off and that's what we woke up this morning to six o'clock in the morning to. People don't want to hear that when they're buying their eggs. Or when you when they say, do you have any eggs? Oh, sorry, no, um, all our uh, chickens were killed last night. You know, they, <laughs> that's not good sales. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, so one of the things that uh, would be helpful to the farm is customers would think more about what else is going on behind the scenes that they may not necessarily know about, that the farmer may not volunteer for a number of reasons, right? Like there are some farmers that shoot predators or trap them. That's not the kind of thing you can say at the farmer's market. So see the collision of values that, that we, we want these products, but we don't want these other things being attached Associated to them. I just want these it. purely free range, happy hens running around in the grass in the woods, but I don't want to know that there's any death or associated. I don't want to know that when you hatch 100 eggs, that 50% of those are roosters. Where do those 50% go? Well, in commercial, they go into a garbage can. In factory farming. And they get shredded and put into dog food or cat food or chicken food, right? And so in, when we hatch 50 chicks or 100 chicks and half of them are roosters, what, what are we going to do with the roosters? Do we have 50 roosters growing and, and have the police at our door? You know, do we, do we give them away to homes? Do we let them go out the side of the road? What, what do we do? So these are the kind of thoughts and, you know, questions and conversations we need to have uh, about something as simple as your dozen eggs at the farmer's market. And one of the reasons that we use khaki, predominantly khaki camels, is khaki camels are in the Guinness World Book of Records for laying more eggs than leghorns, which are the top chicken, egg-laying chicken, on the planet, so like Foghorn Leghorn, you know, Bugs Bunny, Disney, I say, I say. So that, <laughs> the big white chickens, that that is the, those, those chickens have been bred specifically for laying as many eggs as possible. And the khaki Campbell is listed for laying more eggs per year than mm -hmm. uh, Leghorns. So uh, it just makes, especially considering all the things that we've shared, <laughs> ducks make way more sense. They taste like eggs to me. <laughs> they well, taste, let's. They're a bit more flavorful than a chicken egg. Like if, if we eat a chicken egg now, it seems runny and flavorless. So right. they do have a bit so of So maybe flavor. when we describe it, if, if, and let's use scramble because I think that's going to be the easiest. So if we made scramble eggs, comparing chicken to duck, if you took chicken eggs and you added a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of butter and you stirred that all in, that's richer. Now you're getting close to a duck egg. Smooth, creamy, richer, and fuller in flavor. And the custards and the puddings Meringue. and the meringues. I mean, it just stands up and it, the creamy and silky. You will be the queen and king of the dinner party. Ducks are, are sexable. Most people who raise ducks, uh, like the um, Gavin on Denman, who does hundreds every year, doesn't sex them because once you've sexed them, then now you've established which sex they are. And most people who have any interest in ducks only want to buy female ducks. Recently, we sold 30 Muscovy ducks, and we just insisted that everyone buy at least... At least know, one, one male. One male, in, regardless of how many females, right? And so the same problem with ducklings. So now we recently hatched 45 ducklings, and roughly half of those, so 20, roughly 22, 23, are going to be males. What are we going to do with those? Yeah. And the lucky thing with, uh, or fortunate thing with khaki Campbells is that they're easy to sex because the males end up with a, uh, a really dark head, like mallards. The commercial chickens that the vast majority uh, of people purchase, like the kind of brown ones that you see, 
in pictures and on most farms, they, you know, they just have a year and then they're kind of called spent hens because mm -hmm. they're bred to lay an egg every day, and that just, you know, beats up their entire egg laying <laughs> system, right? And they just get worn out. They even will have like a prolapsed uh, uterus, so to speak, where they, you know, you'll just suddenly see the chickens you know, abdomen sitting on the ground. So they're standing, but it's touching the ground. So they're just literally falling apart. And so since we don't feel that that is ethical, the majority of our chickens, we like to purchase um, and raise heritage fowl, which are often what is known as a dual purpose bird. So that will lay eggs well for three to five years, certainly more the first year. And so, um, and certainly less profitable <laughs> and more expensive to uh, have in the second and third year and then after that you would either want to retire that hen and just let her be retired or you would consider eating her because uh, it's a dual purpose bird it's large enough that there's actually some meat on it it's not just an egg laying machine so the same holes with ducks and then ducks it's more um three to five years i don't even think there's such thing as a hybrid egg machine duck i guess it's just too hard to breed that wild out of them <laughs> so with with ducks you don't have the two choices you know that almost all ducks are in essence heritage breeds and they uh, are all closer to being wild and they will all lay eggs you know three more like three to five years mm -hmm. our geese who are laying very well right now they <laughs> will possibly outlive nicole and i so we'll have to write them into the will please make sure our geese go to a good home because <laughs> uh, geese can live up to 20 years Oh, or 30. Or 30 years. Someone it's even we worse. We knew had a 28-year-old goose. Yeah. yeah. So on the on the you know homestead on the farm, the males are food. Yeah. Because you, if you get too many males, um, they gang up on females, and it's not a pretty sight. So. Yeah, to have to see to see two or three or four males on one female. Yeah. It's no good. Yeah, and if it, they're in water, they'll actually drown the females. So, so somewhere, someone somehow has to take responsibility. And yeah. so I, I guess that's part of really what this conversation is about. Because if let's say we hatch a hundred male, a uh, hundred, if, if we hatch a hundred chickens per year, yeah. we have 50 roosters. roosters. If we hatch a hundred ducks per year, we we're hatching also 50 drakes, 50 males. What are we going to do with those? Who is going to eat them? Right? And so, so the, 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 you know, going back then, if you want eggs, then know that, that there is a male and female involved there along the way, and that half of those eggs in your egg carton are male and half of them are female. So if you want to eat chicken or duck or turkey or goose, then know that half, half of all of the eggs hatched of any of those species are going to be male birds. Mm -hmm. Who, what do we do with those? Do we let them go off the, off the con end of the conveyor belt? And all the videos are there on the internet, right? <laughs> you can find them. I won't give any links. You know, they go off the conveyor belt into a garbage can. So part of what we're doing here is what we refer to as, you know, living a more ethical life. And part Small of that scale. is... Small scale. Small scale. Small scale. And part of that is uh, farming in a more ethical manner. And so that brings up these ethical questions of how we would treat animals. So if we're going to eat meat... If we're going to even have eggs, what what are you what are you going to do with all the chickens when they're too old to lay eggs, right? So these are the kind of questions that that we can all be served by asking and asking each other, and then coming up with some kind of answer. So we're going to have you know twenty twenty five male ducks. Who is going to? What are we going to do with them? So they eat slugs, they eat flies, they eat mosquitoes. They can eat thousands in a day. You know they produce eggs. Have you ever had a cat or a dog, let alone a puppy or a kitten, produce eggs? Huh? Hey?